Okay, phase diagrams. These are like maps of the phases or states of a substance. So we make sort of a graph with pressure on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. And so we, there are regions that represent conditions under which that state, solid, liquid, or gas, is stable. And there are lines that represent the pressures and temperatures at which those substances change state. So those, those lines are called the vaporization curve, sublimation curve, and fusion curve. So let's just look at an example here. So this is for water. It is not to scale, but it just gives us a general idea. So pressure on the y-axis, temperature on the x-axis. Um, so this line here divides the solid from the gas. So at these temperatures and pressures, you're going to have sublimation. This line shows fusion, which is melting, so ice melting into liquid water. And this is the vaporization curve representing liquid vaporizing into a gas. And so if you have a temperature and pressure, you can identify what state the substance is in. So if we do 25 degrees Celsius, which is about here, and one atmosphere, we see that water would be a liquid under those conditions. At 100 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere, that would be right on this vaporization curve. And so the water would be in the process of becoming a gas. It would be boiling. If we continue up, this vaporization curve comes to a distinct end. That's the critical point. And beyond that temperature, you're going to have a supercritical fluid. Yes? So we can continue to raise the temperature and it'll stay as a supercritical fluid? If the pressure's high. So if, if you're at atmospheric pressure and you increase the temperature, it's a gas. And it's just going to be a hotter gas. But if the pressure is at least this much, it will be a supercritical fluid. And you can heat it higher, hotter and hotter, and it will continue to be a supercritical fluid. Um, so this point, here we have all three lines coming together. So this is called the triple point, and at this precise pressure and temperature, the gas, the liquid, and the solid are all in equilibrium with each other. Is that weird? It's really weird. You can watch a YouTube video. No audio with this. That's the alcohol. Now it's heated up and it begins to boil. Well, actually, it's not being heated, they're reducing the pressure. So, 30 seconds. So right now there's gas and liquid in there. And now it quit boiling. Two minutes later, they're just pumping, they're reducing the pressure. You see that? It's beginning to freeze. Like, okay. And it's boiling. So it's boiling, it's frozen and it's a liquid all at the same time. Isn't that crazy? Is that, hmm? is that only the relation between pressure and temperature that does that? Yeah, it's just at that cr 
at that triple point, and that triple point is going to be a different place for each substance. But at that one point, that specific combination of temperature and pressure, all three states will exist together. Um, we can look that up, the triple point for water. Wait, here we go. I wonder if Siri could find that for us. Don't, don't do that. Hey Siri, what's the triple point for water? Here's what I found on the web for what's the to the point for water. Have a look. What's the to the point? What is the triple point for water? Okay, check it out. Well, hmm. Getting a phase diagram from uh, Wolfram Alpha. And it looks like it's at a very low pressure, like 10 to the minus 3 kilopascals, and a little under 300 Kelvin. So relatively warm, but a very low pressure. This isn't to scale, but I think the triple point is um, accurately above zero Celsius. Um, you know, being able to attain the triple point is a little bit tricky. They chose T-butyl alcohol for that demonstration because that's one of the easiest ones to do. So we can talk about navigating a phase diagram. Navigating makes me think of you know traveling. How do we get from one place to another? You can navigate in the phase diagram. So you can choose a pressure and look at, well, what happens as I change the temperature at this pressure? Well, at this temperature, it's a solid. As I increase the temperature, it becomes a liquid. And then it boils and becomes a gas. Or you could follow the line of a specific temperature and change the pressure. So here's the temperature at 25 degrees C and one atmosphere. And if I decrease the pressure, the liquid is going to remain a liquid until it gets to this pressure. And then it's going to become a gas. So you can actually cause water to boil at room temperature by reducing the pressure above it. That was a demonstration that my high school chemistry teacher did. There's a lot of things in high school that are very fuzzy and I just don't remember at all. But this was one of those clear moments, right? He had a big filter flask and he had a really big vacuum pump. I wish I could get one of those. Um, and so he started this vacuum pump chugging away, sucking, well, decreasing the pressure in the flask. Right? And there's water in there. And then he started lecturing, and he was going on and on and on. And after a while, the water started to boil. And you're thinking, yeah, there's some heating element under the bench top or something. You know, this is some trick. He made us all come up and put our hand on the flask of boiling water. The first person was pretty nervous. Because that would hurt, right? Boiling water is hot. No, you put your hand on there. It feels the same as touching the bench top. I mean, it's just almost a little cool to the touch. It was freaky. It really was. You can make water boil at room temperature. But that's what the phase diagram tells us. It is a low pressure. Here is the triple point. I should have just gone ahead in the slides because they've got it labeled here. 0 0.006 atmospheres and just above freezing, 0 0.01 degrees Celsius. You can have water, uh, steam, and ice together. Can't you, uh, can't you uh, also freeze water by adding a lot of salt? Um, you can 
You can change the freezing point of water by adding a lot of salt. I yep. think um, my theory professor did that in the class too. He yeah. added like a lot of salt on it. And yeah. Yep, yeah, you can do that. In fact, we are going to do um, something like that. We're going to, our last experiment will be making ice cream. And so what we're going to do there is we'll take ice and you measure the temperature of the ice as it melts. It's going to be zero degrees Celsius. And then we're going to throw a bunch of salt in there, mix it around a little bit, and the temperature will drop. And some, sometimes you can get it down as low as like minus 10 degrees Celsius. No refrigeration happening, just putting ice on the water. Now, to get the water to freeze, um, you're going to have to uh, start out with cool water, not warm water. But yeah, you could do that. Oh, I guess another thing I want to point out. What if the pressure, um, what if the pressure is higher? So here, at one atmosphere, the, the water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. What if we increase the pressure and we want it to boil? It will boil at a higher temperature. One of the things that limits how fast you can cook food is most things involve water boiling, right? You, you boil things. Even when you're baking stuff, um, if there's water present, that will minimize the, the temperature changes that the food can undergo. So by increasing the pressure above the water, you can cause the water to boil at a higher temperature and it'll, things will cook faster. That's why frying something, is, um, it cooks faster because you can heat oil to a higher temperature than you can water. So um, a pressure cooker um, has a lid that clamps on and as you heat the water, the pressure builds up and so it boils at a higher temperature. The modern version of that, which my husband has been having great fun with, and I've really enjoyed him having fun with, is an instant pot. An instant pot is a modern electric pressure cooker, and it's really, really neat. What if the pressure is below one atmosphere? Then the water will boil at a lower temperature. That's how you can get it to boil at, at room temperature. If you're up in the mountains, or you live in Denver, Right, where the elevation is high, um, atmospheric pressure is less than one atmosphere, water boils at a lower temperature, which means that it's going to take longer for your food to cook. Other substances um, are going to have heating or phase diagrams that have different appearances. Notice the slope of this fusion curve for water. It has a negative slope. It tips back. Most things have a positive slope on their heating curve, meaning that as you heat a solid, it becomes less dense, and the liquid will be less dense than the solid. That has nothing to do with density. What am I talking about? As, as you What is wrong with my mind? Um, what I'm trying to say is if you put pressure, if you increase the pressure on a regular liquid, you'll cause it to freeze. With water, in a certain range here, so here we have ice just below freezing point. If you put pressure on it, if you increase the pressure, what happens? You can make it melt. So here's one atmosphere, and it's, it's frozen, and it, it's below zero. If I put pressure on it, I can actually make it melt. That's how ice skates work. Ice skates put the weight of your body, the force of your mass, onto a very narrow blade on the ice. That puts a lot of pressure on the ice and actually causes the top layer of the ice to melt, making it more slippery than just regular ice. And so that's how ice skates work. Um, so that's not normal. Most things have a positive slope in their fusion curve. This one is for iodine. Uh, this one's for carbon dioxide. The interesting thing about carbon dioxide, um, here's one atmosphere. At one atmosphere, 
there is no temperature at which the liquid is stable. You can't get liquid CO2 at one atmosphere of pressure. You have to go up here past five atmospheres before you can get liquid CO2. Any questions?